is on the west coast of Sweden, but before 1658 it was a coastal town in the eastern part of the Kingdom of Denmark. The place has roots going back at least as far as the 13th century and was given a status of town in its present uh, location only in the 14th century. The town was situated uh, in its present uh, in the bank of the Isan River, close to Estuary, in low-lying lands with sandbags, small areas of wetlands, just a few meters above the sea level at the time. Soon after the foundation of the start, town, around 1330, a simple fortification was built. Archaeological remains have been found at some places in the town, showing that it consisted of a moat, probably with a rampart inside it possibly crowned with a palisade. Halfstad had a strategic location from the point of view of control and trade at a place where the river flowed into the sea and at a junction between the north and the south coast road and the road in towards Sweden. But the site was also in, in an exposed position since it lacked the protection of a fortified castle. Hamsa was indeed captured several times during the 15th century and also in the early 16th century. And in the reign of King Christian III, about uh, 1530 and about 1550, work began to strengthen and repair the fortifications. More thoroughgoing work was started in 1560 when relations with Sweden became increasingly tense. In 1970, a semicircular brick tower with cannon and registers was excavated in the northern part of the town. A street ran through it with a gate in the wall. It was thus possible to establish a location of the north gate that wasn't known for. The round was damaged by artillery fire from the siege in 1563 through the Nordic Seven Year Wars. Uh, when the Swedish army attacked the northern parts of the town. The excavation thus showed that parts of the medieval fortification had been replaced with brick structures at this time. We do, do not know, however, to what extent, since there are no observations for any other parts of the fortifications. The reign of the next king, Christian IV, saw the start of a whole series of building projects. In the fact, 1590s, the foiled overlord in Hansa was entrusted with the task of constructing a war between the town and the river, as there were no previously had been one. The buildings were therefore had to be moved in this area. Remains of the war had, would have been uncovered on several occasions during the last eight years. It was built on red brick and has supporting pillars at regular intervals. In the period of uh, 1598 and to 1605, the fortification was completely modernized with seven meter high ramparts, curtain walls, a broad moat, six acute angled bastions, two cavaliers, and four new gates. In East Bastion, there were two water casements. The East Gate with casement on either side of the bridge was short and wide to fit into the coast wall. It was also the biggest gate. Dams was constructed to keep the water in the moat, and a natural spring northwest of the town was also used for which water was led down to the moat. Of course, uh, this is also the design we see here uh, on the early security date map, a spy map from 1644. Of course, this map shows later additions and the town plan is not correct. One result uh, of the king's contact with the Netherlands was that Dutch builders was employed. Hans van Steenrikke was given the responsibility for several fortification projects, including Halmstad. Uh, he died in 1601, 
and was succeeded by William Cornelison, the nearest man. The Dutch system with theoretical origin in Italy was well suited to the low-lying hamster, and the only problems were in the north, where Jan Bayer, meaning Gelosil, rose about 400 meters from the town boundary and constituted a military threat to the town. Archaeological excavation shows that the weight of the bastion and cargo walls and the ground condition did not require any drainage. The walls were simply dug into the clay, and on the outside, there was a moat reinforced with poles. The building material was most locally, but some came from Shenan, some southern Norway, Holland, and from the underside of the border, from Sweden. In 1611, uh, war with Sweden broke up, and 1612 construction began on two smaller bastions at the river wall. At the same time, artwork was constructed on the east side of the river, consisting of earthen ramparts to protect the bridge and the gate. The wall and at least one of the bastions by the river had been shown to rest on timber structures in certain cases, on the Neville Jetties. An outwork was also built a few years earlier in front of the North Gate. The two cavaliers were likewise made high for the artillery. And should we also mention that the castle was built in 1610 to 1615 in the southern part of the town. Christian IV had built a pleasure palace, but his intention was also to isolate it from the rest of the town, which possibly happened through the digging of a small ditch. A large fire ravaged the town in August 1690. A new town plan with a regular street grid, as we see here, was designed by the Dutchman Abraham de la Haye. It was meant to suit the existing gates and to allow quick passages to Bastions and had a large square where the garrison could be lined up. There was also some adaption to the older town plan with its block boundaries, and therefore it was not wholly symmetrical. After 1620, there was work on repair and reinforcement, reflex period in Denmark, where the country was involved, as Rick said, in the Thirty Years' War, and where there were no direct threats in the immediate surroundings of Sweden. Modernization began in 1637 with new modes and outworks, and the rebuilding of bastions and ramparts. It's possible at this time that the casemates was worn up. An older flanking system was now replaced with a more modern or deeper design with more artworks. In 1643, Sweden attacked again. The war ended badly for the war for Denmark, which lost Halland and other territories for 30 years through the Peace of Bremsbrug. This considerably improved Sweden's strategic position with several harbors towards the west. Long before 1645, German shippings launched a distance trade with Bia Hamsa. A virtuous context was a national border benefited the Danish. Uh, the Swedish custom policy, however, and the change pattern of demand and the core harbor, the deep core harbor in, in Hamsa, meant stagnation for the town under Swedish rule. And the Swedish fortification uh, officer, Johan Van Schön, Traveled through Halland in 1646 to inspect fortresses, harbors, and watercourses. He drew up proposals for a citadel in the southern part of the town, which was least exposed in military terms, and also in order to command the mouth of the river. But the proposal was not accepted, and a new plan was drawn with the project fortification line between the castle and the town, equipped with a stone wall, earthen ramparts, and uh, moat and bastions. The reconstruction was finished just in time for the Scania War in the mid 1600s. The last rebuilding took place in the 1680s and 90s, when new, when new remnants was constructed. But 
Oh, sorry. That was a line between the castle and, and the city. And this is the remnants. Uh, they show that all the north one consisted solely of earthworks and steel pine. The fortification soon became antiquated, however, needing major alterations. In 735 to 36, the defense was demolished and the roads defeated. In the second part of my paper, I just want to give you uh, uh, some archaeological examples how 17th century fortification has affected on the townspeople's physical environment and habits in various ways. Researchers have believed that a comprehensive, contemporary rearrangement according to a new town plan after the fire of 1619 uh, was a painful process. But some Archaeological investigation suggests a modification of that picture. This is an example in the central part of Hamstar of buildings being re erected at the same place, and the plot boundaries were not moved until 20 to 30 years after the fire. But radical changes also took place before 1619. When the Eastern Bridge Gate was built in 1603, there was a plot with buildings beside this. And when the Camel War started, in 1611, many of the buildings was demolished. The immediate threat of war from Sweden required that movements to strategic points within that town had to take place quickly, and the old town plan partly prevented this. A new street was made with roughly the same course as today, but slightly narrow. After the fire in the town, all that happened was that this street was widened and adjusted to help to run straight towards the gate. In the absence of archaeological observation, we do not know whether similar changes took place in the north in this case. Enclosing the town with ramparts and walls also restricted the old way of managing waste. Some of the town's households, rubbish and waste from craft were dumped down to the riverbank, and through time this helped to raise the surface of the town in relation to the water during the medieval times. After the war was built against the river, people had to change their waste habits and choose other strategies, for example, feeding the wet areas inside the town. This was one of the several reasons why the new fortification was not a problematic limitation to the expansion of settlement. Other facts was relative to weak population development and access to areas which would have belonged to the town's two monasteries. A change in the hydrological environment of the town probably began when it was close behind walls and ramparts. As streets and squares and lots were more constantly painted with stones and with a feeling of parts of the town where the ground had been wet and absorbed rainwater, and the need was probably created to drain water from the town. A recent excavation showed that when the brick wall facing the Nissan was built, it was not provided with openings to allow water to run off. In connection with the camera wall, as a, ramp, a rampart, as I told you before, was built behind this. This could have probably created waterlogged areas behind the rampart on the town side which was stored, where water would break it out as a regular intervals through the wall. You can see what here. It's not original, it's, it's later, it's 1611. Uh, generally speaking, we have also seen the wooden galleries were laid down to drain off water inside the town during the period. The last example, a very short example, concerns the way of dealing with old defences. The 17th century fortification was placed in the same area as the old close predecessor, but constructed so that the older moat uh, was either completely filled in or extended, but with one ex exception. On maps from the 17th century, there are ponds on either side of the present cavity. They appear to have been newly created, but archaeological excavation in recent decades show that they were part of the medieval moat. The aim of the ponds is still achieved. Thank you.